So why would anybody want to make their own pencils if you can just buy them at the dollar store? Well, I made some pretty cool custom pencils, so stick around and I'll show you how I did them. There's a little bit of a backstory here. I wanted to show you where I got my inspiration for this project. What you're looking at right now is a video by Andy Klein. He's demonstrating his pencil making jig. He's bringing his invention to market through an Indiegogo campaign. So if you want this in your shop and this sounds like the kind of effort that you'd like to support, please consider a pledge to help me make it a reality. Thank you. As I began to follow Andy, I learned a little more. He revealed where his inspiration came from. David Picciuto. It's all David Picciuto's fault. Three years ago, David made a video showing how he made some pencils out of scrap wood. And then... Welcome to Make Something With Me, David Picciuto. Today, I'm gonna to show you a cool jig and technique to make six-sided pencil. My buddy, Andrew Klein, invented this six-sided pencil making jig after seeing me struggle with making pencils a couple years ago. In one of Andy's earlier prototypes, as you can see here, he uses a router and rotates the wood stock every 60 degrees. Well, I heard router bit 60 degrees. And I thought, I've got a 60 degree router bit and a CNC router. Hmm, that's the moment the spark caught fire. And I had plenty of wood scraps. I began collecting measurements to determine how many standard pencils I could get out of a typical piece of scrap wood. I decided that I could fabricate four pencils at a time. If I had a piece of scrap that was two inches wide, eight and a half inches long, and three quarters of an inch thick. These little boards would then have to be resawn right down the middle to create the two halves of a pencil sandwich. This little saw kerf is the key to my screw and washer hold down technique on the CNC router. This piece of cherry started out as a slab, so it required a few more cuts. I also prepared some black walnut, some white ash, and some cedar to cut. You'll see those later. Well, before we let any more sawdust fly, I thought I'd walk you through the CAD and the CAM that I used. I'd also like to point out a few of the little details that were pretty important to this project working out as well as it did. What you're looking at right now is the fixture board or the pencil jig. When we get to the real video, you'll notice that this is made out of particle board. Most of the holes you see in this board are for registration dowels. I've been using this technique more and more, especially when it comes to carving two-sided parts, like these pencils. Those little yellow circles are the locations for the dowels that are going to go into the spoil board. Those purple shapes represent the split boards that we just got done with on the bandsaw. They're now ready to be machined down to the proper thickness. The models you see here depicted in green are at the second stage of machining, where the grooves are there ready for the graphite to go in, we've got registration holes, and they're ready for a graphite sandwich. The blue rods here just represent the graphite when it's in place. Well, this turquoise model, as you can see, represents the graphite sandwich. At this point, it's ready for the final two-sided machining operations. And of course, these yellow objects are the finished pencil models. You may have guessed, but the rounded end is where the ferrule goes on. If you're interested in acquiring the CAD files from this project, I am going to be making them available. They may not be ready right when this video goes public, but they will be soon, so just keep checking my website for updates. We'll check the simulation, and then we're ready to start cutting wood. My work zero is referenced off the table because the first holes will be in the spoil board. I often use this eighth inch probe for referencing. This fixed plate is near the side rail of my machine and it references all of the Z positions for future tool changes in this project.
Now that this fixture board is finished, it can be used over and over again anytime I want to make pencils. I didn't mention those inscribed rectangles earlier, but uh, you can see why they're there. And I'm really loving this super glue and blue tape technique. It's working great. And there's my fender washer clamps doing their job. Because I'm machining for thickness, I'm referencing off the fixture, not the top of the stock. That little sticky note is a double layer of blue tape equal to what is under the wood. The graphite sticks that I'm using in this project are two millimeter diameter. So either a 16th inch or a two millimeter ball end mill will work just fine. By the way, this is the first test run you're looking at and it's made from radiata pine. I use these mechanical pencil refills. They fit pretty good. I'll have links to all my materials and tools down in the description, so take a look. They're affiliate links and they really help support my channel, so thank you. While this glue is drying, it gave me a chance to get the walnut and cherry started. the glues dry, it's time to load up the G-code and start making pencils. I use Starbond Super Glue throughout this project. Get some for yourself using the code down in the description. When flipping it over to do the backside, the dowel pins ensure that it's in the right position. There is still a little bit of light sanding to do to soften the edges and to square off the ends. The ferrules have a nice snug fit and I use some CA glue to hold them secure. I didn't glue in the erasers, that way they stay replaceable. Mmm, walnut oil finish on walnut pencils. Doesn't get much better than that. Each ferrule is a one of a kind. And I made them on my antique metal lathe. Well, if I had to pick a favorite of all the woods that I tried, it would probably be either the cherry or the walnut. Um, they both look really nice and the brass ferrules, I think, just really go with the wood colors very well. Well, if you're at all interested in making your own pencils, don't forget to check out David Petuto's videos, which I'm going to have links down below. He's got two videos on making pencils. Uh, Andrew Klein 
his channel, he not only does he have a video showing how he makes some pencils, but he also has an Indiegogo fundraiser going on right now where he's selling his pencil making contraptions. Um, and if you're really adventurous, maybe you can make them with a CNC router like I did mine. It's a lot of fun. So till next time, take care and we'll see you soon. Have you ever thought about making your own pencils? Well, I did. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, well, have you ever thought about making your own pencils? Well, I... <laughs> uh, why is this so funny? <laughs>